Hey everyone, welcome to Wargaming Power. I am David, and today I'm very excited to say we're going to be looking around our new Konya cage. So those of you who follow my channel probably will be aware that we upgraded Olive's cage recently, which was very great, it's nice and big, but we also wanted to upgrade our other rescue Konyas. So, you know, they were bonding, they were working very well, and we just thought we'd take the plunge. We've done a lot of training with them and see how they'll get on. I'm going to do a video on um, a sort of follow-up bonding video on that topic, show you how we got them into the cage, the process we went through, and just how we introduced them, and also some of the pitfalls that we encountered while getting them in the cage and happy together. So in this video, I'm just going to be talking about how we set up their cage, going to take you for a little tour around it, and just show you what we did and what we plan to do as well with it. So rather than me talking in front of the cage, I'm going to do what I did with my cockatiel cage setup video, which I'll leave a card for now. I'm just going to pan around the cage and show you all the little bits and talk about them. So this is a Liberta Oregon flight cage, just like the boys. However, this is the double door version, which we actually prefer because the locks are much more sturdy. And on top of that, you can sort of open one door and do things and leave the other one shut, vice versa. Um, I'm going to leave this, um, the dimensions in the description for you because I know a lot of people ask about that. So please do check out the description for any dimensions or technical specifications about the cage because right now I'm just going to sort of go around it and talk about each individual bit, why we did what we did and what we've used. So I'm just going to let Scampi and Pickles wander in and out as they want which is another sort of awesome thing about this cage, you know having one door open they can just come in and out when they want to. Um, the first sort of thing I've mentioned is what we did is we decided to put perches on the doors this is something you need to be somewhat careful about because it's easy to um, spike yourself while you're trying to clean them out, so do be aware. We have one on each door. I'll open the other door as well so you can see. And we've also attached toys next to them as well. So if they want to be out, they can sit on the door, they can sit on the perch, and it sort of makes them e it's easier for them to come in and out as well. Pickles is just going to climb around the edge. So I'm just going to take you inside the cage now. So, as you can see, we've got stainless steel um, metal food bowls. What we did, unlike the boys, is we have both food and water on top, and we have them at opposite sides. This is because Scampi and Pickles aren't brothers and sisters, they didn't grow up together. So while they are bonded and they're getting on very well, we want them to have their own space for food and water so they don't end up fighting each other. Just behind, we have a long wooden perch. We have a long one there, we have a sort of longish one which we're going to replace it with. I believe they're called manzanita perches, so we're going to have a nice long one on either side. And then we have a nice sort of like sanding sort of perch there for their feet, another sanding perch and a couple of little toys there. Going around the top, what we did is we set up three perches. If you see, they're all about, about the same height. This is to give both Scampi and Pickles options on where they want to sleep and also make it easy for them to navigate around the top of the cage. As you may have noticed on this side, that is slightly lower, so they can sort of climb and hop between them. And if you look on the other side, it's exactly the same. We have exactly the same sort of perch, which allows them to climb and hop between all of the perches easily. I'm just going to continue panning around and talking about the perches, then we're going to go into the toys. We have a nice sort of corner shelf perch here, a wooden one. Put some treats on them there. It's just for foraging and treating and enjoying themselves. I'm just going to pan over so you can see our two little lovebirds having a little preen on top of the cage. Just interrupting, sorry. But it's just too cute to ignore. Um, but yes, so we have that. Then we have another sanding perch because it's so important to keep your parrot's nails trim. And if you can do that through using sanding perches and a variety of perches, then it's so much better than having to restrain them or try and trim it. Even though it is worth training them to accept nail trimming. Um, we also have a nice bamboo ladder on the bottom, another perch for toys and play, just to make it easier for them to get down as well onto the floor. Then we have a nice sisal rope, again, just so they can navigate down and access the floor easier, as well as play with toys down there. So now I've talked a little bit about the perches and the way we've set them up and why. Let's go onto the floor here. As you can see, we've got a substrate base, which we use Easy Chick for. We're big fans of substrates, it encourages foraging, it makes the floor of the cage so much more interesting, and of course, you know, it's, it removes smell and it's just, it's easy to clean. There's a lot of argument about it. I'll leave a video a video link to my current video on it, which is substrate versus bars, just in case you want to learn a little bit more. But I do plan to do a dedicated substrate video just to explain more about it and what types you should use, because I get a lot of questions about it. So I've talked a lot about the perches. I've talked about the floor. 
And I want to quickly mention as well, we have we did have dowels with this perch, but we decided we we're gonna remove them entirely and not use them. Because while the boys like long perches, the conyers prefer to hop and jump around. So we thought we'd try it without, and so far it's been going quite well. So without further ado, let's go into the toys. So we'll just have a quick cuddle break before we go into the toys, just so you can have some cuteness added to your video experience. These guys, they're just so adorable when they're not misbehaving. So now, as I said, we're going to talk about the toys. We'll start on this side of the cage, the left side. So we've got a party preener toy from Northern Parrots. We're quite a fan of this because it encourages preening behaviour without having using cotton rope or any naughtiness. It does have some bees at the top, but the conyers don't really interact with them, so we're quite pleased with that. Next to that is kind of like a caterpillar Planet Pleasures toy, which again we really like. It's a great toy and it encourages preening and chewing. We have a Sky Prep Products um, pizza slice toy. What we do with this toy is we tend to hide treats within the holes and encourage them to chew it. We have another mini sort of pinata toy from Planet Pleasures there. We have the woven basket. Again, we got this from Northern Parrots and we really like this toy. It's just good because again, you can hide foraging treats that encourage chewing. Um, we've got another another Planet Pleasures, lots of Planet Pleasures. Another Planet Pleasures toy there. It's like a set of little sombrero hats which they can enjoy, which hang on a door. This is one of Scampy's old favorite toys which we made sure to include in the cage because we wanted to make it as comfortable as possible. And then we have a Sky Pet Products sort of chewable toy there. And in the corner we have a kind of octopus toy, I don't know if you can see it. Now, these aren't all the toys we're going to have in here. I'm gonna show you a couple more that we have and we're gonna put in, but for now we wanted to keep the cage as accessible as possible so the conyers can get used to it and enjoy it without having too much stress and too much clutter. Oh, also on the floor we have some yucca chips uh, and a bit of a cuttlefish bone for them to chew out and enjoy it because they both love destroying them. So one other thing I wanted to mention as well, if you're interested in buying any of these bits, the perches are mostly available on my Amazon store if you want to sort of get ideas. A lot of the toys are available from our friends over at Northern Parrot, so please do feel free to check the link in the description to find out what sort of goodies you can get for your parrot. I wanted to show you a couple of other toys we're gonna be popping in there. We've got a few more in order as well, which I may leave in the description for you later, or just add a, a little update on my community, because I do post on my community regularly, so if you want to see sort of mini updates or behind the scenes, please do check it out. But this, is a Wesco kebab, and we absolutely love these. These are one of the birds' favorite toys. We haven't added it in right now, again, because we wanted to sort of let, get them used to the cage, but they're just very soft wood, they're easily chewable, they're just a lot of fun to chew, and next to it is another Planet Pleasures toy. Again, it's something that's easy to chew and fun, because basically you want the most easily chewable toys and lots of fun toys, so they can just destroy them. If a bird's destroying a toy, it's awesome, it's not bad, because it means they're enjoying it. So yeah, we'll be adding these two to the cage as well. So that's generally the setup of the cage. I'm just gonna sort of pan down as well so you can see what else we've done. What we did is because, obviously, we didn't bother using the bars at the bottom of the cage, we made this very handy shelf, just like we did with the boys. If you can see in the comparison there as well, you can see with the boys have their um, bits and pieces, just to quickly pan around so you can look. And obviously they've got a top perch, which we'll probably add for this one as well. But anyway, um, we've got this lovely handy storage shelf. We've got a little towel on there for them to play with and some of their favorite treats. Then below, we've got the travel carrier and we've got a box full of extra toys. And you can see a couple that I talked about just a moment ago. And yeah, it just makes a lovely little setup. It's on wheels as well, so you can move it around. If you need to clean out a hoover behind, it's easy peasy. But yes, that is generally everything I wanted to say about this cage. So yeah, that is the complete tour of our Konya's cage and how we set it up. I hope you found this video useful. If you have any comments or questions, suggestions, please feel free to leave them down below. But yes, in the meantime, thanks very much for watching. Take care, and from me, Scampy and Pickles, have a great day.